Welcome to the Q master class on Q Vital. Today is 14th October 2021. I am Sagan Nandi. You have my detail already. Let's continue with the presentation. Disclaimer I am not an investment advisor. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk. You and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades. In the Q master class, we are going through all the Q systems and underlying platforms one by one. Today, I am going to discuss Q Vital, the system for fundamental and peer analysis. You will note that in the latest Q vital, Q symbol has been added. So we don't have to run Q symbol separately. We are able to convert ticker symbols into definitive symbols in Q vital itself. And we also have a button now to import the trade station scan result or trade station radar data into QVital using the smart action button. I'll explain that in the session. Today's topics, ah, did I? Give me a minute, please. It should not be Q index. Today's topic, what is QVital, underlying platform and data, market, country applicability, how QVital is organized, the conventions used to make it intuitive, the input parameters, smart action buttons that create the stock scorecard, and then smart filter buttons that act upon the stock scorecard live walkthrough and trading workflows. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions using the chat panel or you may use audio if you would like to. As you have seen in Q index, some of the parts will be repetitive, but still I may go through them so that each video is complete in itself. Especially the parts on organization convention maybe repetitive, even that on score card will be repetitive, but I'll go through them just for the sake of completeness in each video. Cube Vital, what is it? It is a tool to make fundamental and peer analysis of one stock or a group of stocks. It provides us with root stock insight key information like percentage change, earnings, revenue growth, values, valuation score, etc., And also PR stocks up, down, breadth information to assess if the industry is strong. So looking at the starting page, the home page, which provides the root stock insight, we are able to know key information about the stock which is usually enough to make a Q trading decision and also see how the industry is doing in itself using numbers as well as the PR advanced decline graph. It is also possible using Q Vital to import Q global technical scan result with a single click and then carry out the fundamental analysis. So Q Global has a large number of scans. Some of them are combo scans like Finder, and some of them are trade setups, individual trade setups like Go With Flow, Bounce, Box. 
And then there are other scans for finding, for example, stocks at price extreme low and reversing. So all the scans create a result of stocks. And with a single click, we are able to import those stocks that is result of technical analysis into QVITAL to carry out the fundamental analysis. In the latest version, we are also able to import Q technical scan result. It can be either sonar, that is radar on trace station or the trace station scans. We are able to import them also with a single click, carry out fundamental analysis. And because Q symbol has been embedded in Q Vital, we'll first be able to convert the tickers into definitive symbols. So we don't need to open symbol separately. When we carry out the fundamental scorecard analysis, be it for the root stock or the stocks that we input or import, either input in Q Vital, a list of stocks or import from Q Global, Q Elite, or maybe even from Q Edge, et cetera, it will create a stock scorecard that is comprehensive yet intuitive. As you have seen in the webinars, I spend only a few seconds to find the strongest stocks. You may spend a couple of minutes if you wanted to find more nuanced, fundamentally strong stocks like box stocks and others, but it is very intuitive. Scorecard is organized into panels. I'll go through the panels later. Vital also has a universe tab that is used for storing the trading universe for each trader. That may be different for different traders. I usually store only broad lists and then create specific lists using Vital itself. Specific lists like high growth stock, high beta stocks, high, high dividend yield stocks or undervalued stocks, all those stocks I don't store in universe, I store broad lists like all liquid stocks or stocks with liquid options, or maybe some lists with bullish seasonality for the current month. That is the only place in Q types systems where we store list of stocks. Then using the smart filter buttons, we can find strong or weak fundamental stocks going up or down respectively in real time. You could do it end of day also. After finding fundamentally stocks, we use built-in integration with Finder or Sonar that is using Q Global on Metastock but Q Elite on Tristation, integration with technical analysis to check technical signals and setups. Use built-in integration with Q Global or Q Elite to check technical charts and confirm the setup. Built-in integration with Q Edge to check industry strength weakness and built-in integration with Q Seasonality to check if seasonality is bullish or bearish. All these integrations together identify 360 degree trends where all the forces are aligned in our favor. That is how we use QVital to carry out fundamental analysis and then integrate with other systems to complete the 360 degrees analysis. We can also start a trading workflow with QVital. That is the fundamental first workflow. So it is a component to be used in the beginning of a workflow or you may use it in the middle of a workflow, like if you are doing top-down analysis, then Q edge will be the starting point and Q vital will be the, probably the second step in the top-down. What are the underlying platforms and data? Runs on Microsoft Excel 64-bit and Windows 64-bit, 32-bit versions also work. It is suggested that you never save Q systems while using it. When you use Cube Vital and exit it, usually Microsoft will prompt you whether you want to save. Please do not save. 
that is to avoid inadvertently making changes and corrupting the system. We never have to save anything in QVital unless you are updating the list in the stock universe. If you are updating stock universe list, then, it, then only you may save QVital. What is the data source? It is definitive icon or Zenith data, Metastock Zenith, 100% real time. Country market applicability. Certainly it can be used in the USA market, but also in global markets. It can be used in any country and any exchange of the world. That is useful. Even if you are trading only in the USA market, some of the stocks, even some of the high growth stocks are actually from other countries. For example, Infosys, I-N-F-Y, an Indian IT company, quite popular among growth stocks. It was more so earlier, but now also very strong stock. It is listed in India and it is also listed in the USA. So when you carry out a peer analysis, you may carry out, of course, a peer analysis in the USA market, but you may also carry out a peer analysis of Infosys in India to see whether the Indian industry or industry peers are also strong. We can check the industry also from QH for India market and using QVital, this session is for QVital, we are able to see how Infosys peers are doing in its home country. So even if you are trading only in the USA market, it is useful and I use it that way if it is an ADR, that is the stock is actually from another country, then I check out its home country root stock and carry out a peer analysis. Non-growth stocks are also of course available like British Petroleum, for example. Organization, QVital is organized into tabs. These are user views. QVital calculations are carried out in the cache in real time. Cache is invisible to the user. The user views are for viewing and then filtering, selecting and acting upon the data using smart action button to populate the scorecard tab and then use smart filter buttons to act upon the scorecard. It has multiple tabs, home, that is for rootstock summary information. Home also accepts the input. Symbol tab. Now Q symbol is not to be not required to be run separately. You may use vital for converting ticker symbols into definitive symbols. And there is a button now to import Q elite ticker symbols. Universe tab is repository of your own trading universe. And then two stock scorecard tabs, stock and stock two. They have the exact same layout, how to use them, when to use which one. If the stocks that you are analyzing belong to the same industry, then you may take the scorecard in stock tab. If they belong to different industries, then you may take them to stock two scorecard. Why so? Because if they are in different industries and how can they be from different industries? Let's say we ran seasonality analysis to find the bullish stocks in October current month. Then we carry out their fundamental analysis is cube vital. In that case, the stocks will most likely be in different industries. Then we want to take them to stock to scorecard they are in different industries. If you find a particular stock you like, maybe it is a crown jewel, then you would like to carry out its peer analysis of that single crown jewel. And those peer stocks will be brought into stock tab. That's why there are two tabs. When you have stocks from multiple industries, 
you may bring the scorecard to stock two. There is a separate smart action button for that. And if you like a particular stock, you would like to carry out a PR analysis using that stock as root stock, that result you will bring to stock time. So that is the convention I use. Whenever the stocks are in same industry, I bring them to stock tab. When they are in different industries, I bring them to stock two tab. Both have the exact same scorecard layout. Convention. Tab name. If the name is in full capital, usually it is protected and not available for editing and filtering. It may accept some inputs, but not available for editing, filtering by smart filter buttons. If the tab name is not in full capital, it usually means you can view, select, filter, delete the data in that tab. Input fields and parameters, they are in green checkered background. Status fields, they are in yellow background or yellow text. Smart action buttons. These are used for calculation, navigation, and selection within the current tab. Then the buttons are in cyan color. So whenever we see a cyan button, we know it is going to keep us in the current tab. For cube vital, that is vital. And if the action button is linking to, integrating with, or navigating to external app, like QH, Q seasonality, then that will be in orange color and pause, play, smart filter, reset, refresh button, those are in black color. And for smart filter buttons, these are used to act upon the scorecard, cyan, green, and olive. They are bullish buttons, magenta, red, orange, bearish buttons, and yellow is neutral button. For the data and insight, in not only the stock scorecard, but also in home page. In fact, in all queue systems, not only dives programs, that is icon-based programs, but also on the charts, the data and insight color scheme is same. Cyan or green is bullish. Cyan is usually more bullish than green. Same on charts also. Magenta or red is bearish. Magenta is usually more bearish than red. Yellow is neutral. Now, when you are looking at scores, not values, but scores, Q scores, like valuation score, fund score, short squeeze score, etc., then the score fields in scorecard, the color scheme used is three color scheme, cyan, magenta, yellow. So we know from the color of the score, cyan is bullish, magenta, bearish, yellow, neutral. Those are scores by comparing a stock with peer stocks. And then there are fundamental numbers like earnings growth, P ratio, dividend yield, percentage, everything. All of those numbers that are not scores, that is they are numbers about the stock, not in comparison to other stocks. Then there is a three color scheme that is green, bullish, red, bearish, yellow, neutral. Now this coloring of data inside helps us check the strongest or weakest stocks across any dimension, whether it is alpha, beta, EBITDA, PE ratio, PBR, or valuation score, fund score, anything on the stock scorecard, any column that creates a heat map. And using the heat map, we are able to easily identify the strongest and weakest stocks. When the data is in a tabular column, tabular layout, then double clicking a column header, sorts the column, double clicking again will reverse the sort order. And if QH is running, then you may use the hotkeys, Control Shift H for highlighting selected rows, Control Shift A to sort by ascending order, A for ascending, Control Shift D to sort by descending input for q vital root stock or stock list 
So if, if we are carrying out paired analysis for one stock, then we enter the root stock. If we are calculating scorecard for a list, we enter the stock list and the stock list may be imported from other systems through integration. The other systems could be technical analysis systems like Q Global, Q Elite, or sector industry rotation analysis like Q Edge, seasonal analysis, Q Season, et cetera. And then there is a tuner field. Usually you don't need to change it. Sometimes for some countries during pre-market hours, some stocks price may change and that may appear as real-time data in Q analytics, like the advanced decline graph for PR stocks that will think that some stocks price has changed, though regular hours have not started yet. If you don't want that, then temporarily until the regular market is open, increase the tuner value to a value higher than threshold. Threshold is a number calculated by Q Vital, it is available on the home page. So if you are analyzing root stocks using Vital in pre-market hours, and usually I have seen it in the USA market, you may see real-time analytics are shown, like real-time advanced decline, but market has not started. If you don't want that, please change. Increase the tuner value to a value higher than threshold, but temporarily, after market opens, you may change it to default value, which is 50. And anyway, we don't want to save the file when we exit. Those are the inputs. Now the smart action buttons. These are used to process, view, and highlight data. Navigate within the current app. Those will be in cyan color integrate with communicate data to and navigate to external apps. Those will be in magenta color. The external systems will be Q Global, Elite, Finder, Edge, Seasonality, it will not be Q Vital. How did I miss that? Integration with external apps is context sensitive. The system understands the context intuitively. For example, selecting one or multiple stocks will send those stocks to QVital for fundamental scorecard calculation. So we may select one stock or multiple stocks from scorecard tab, that is stock or stock two. If we select one stock, it will carry out peer analysis of that stock as a root stock. If we select multiple stocks, it will calculate scorecard of that list. If no stock is selected, it will navigate to QVITA. Another example will be if we are on a stock in stock scorecard and we try to integrate with QEdge, if we are on a stock, it will go to QEdge and show us the industry scorecard for that stock's industry. But if our context does not have any stock, then it will just go to the home page of Q Edge to show the overall sector industry stock, advanced decline breadth, and bucket analysis. So it is context sensitive from every sense. Now the buttons, home button takes you to home tab from any other tab on the home tab if available. And for Q Vital, home tab is available. It clears the input. We have many other buttons. I will later on use all the buttons on live data. Smart action buttons continued. Peer analysis, two buttons. One is to take the stocks to stock tab and the other button, not so bold, bold outline that will take us to stock two tab. That is for fundamental and peer analysis. Universe button will take us to the universe tab that is repository for trading universe. Now symbol is integrated. Q symbol is integrated inside Q vital. So we have a symbol button that will take us to symbol tab for converting tickers to definitive RIC, definitive instrument code or identification code. Pause button to pause real-time retrieval from Refinitiv, 
saves processing power and memory play to start real-time retrieval. As soon as real-time data is coming in, queue processing is started automatically. Chart button opens the charts in queue global. It's an external system. So the action button is in orange color. Anytime we have a button color in orange, we know it will take us to a, a different app. More buttons. Industry graph, integrate with QH to look up industry graph. Again, context sensitive. If we are on a stock, the context has a stock, it will look up that stock's industry graph. If we are not on a stock, it will take us to QH home tab. Industry, that is for industry rotation analysis for a stock. Seasonality button, integrate with Q season for seasonality analysis. Finder, integrate with Q finder to look up technical signals. Q elite sonar export. We use that button to get ticker symbols of one stock or a list of stocks in Q scorecard, the stock or stock two tabs. Take those lists for further analysis using Q elite. Usually we'll put them in sonar to check their technical signals and setups. That is integration between fundamental analysis of vital and technical analysis of Q elite. And now we have one Q elite sonar import button. Looks like a radar. That is to import, import ticker symbols from Q elite sonar. It can be sonar or scan razor. We are able to import them that will convert the tickers into definitive code using the symbol, what we used to do in Q symbol app. Now we are able to do that inside Vita. Once the symbols are converted from ticker to RIC, then we carry out their fundamental analysis. So starting with sonar for technical analysis and getting the data into Vital for fundamental analysis. Different steps of the 360 degrees workflow. Q Global Explorer import is also there. Again, technical analysis in Q Global, the symbols can be imported into Vital for carrying out the next step that is fundamental analysis. Reset button, clear the input fields. Now we have additional tabs like symbol tab where we have all the symbols. We don't want to keep that symbol list in symbol tab all the time. Once processing is done, we want to clear it. So I added this button to reset the input fields. Top 10, when we are on a stock scorecard, then top 10 button highlights the top 10 rows, removes all smart filters. One example of how I use it is sort the stock scorecard by real-time percentage in descending order. So the best performers come to the top, click the top 10 button to highlight the top 10 stocks and study them. See their valuation score, see their growth score, growth data, and also see quickly what industries they belong to. That will give us an idea the top 10 stocks, are they in energy sector or real estate sector, etc. That gives us an idea which industry is strong. And then we may, of course, look up the QH industry scorecard, but using top 10 is useful, both to look at the top performing or bottom performing stocks, and then also check their industries. And I tend to say, if we find buying shorting opportunities from top 10, why look? further below the list. Top 10 are the strongest or the weakest. We may look at them and find trading opportunities from them first. Of course, remember it doesn't have smart filters applied. So if we are 
interested only in crown jewels, for example, then we'll apply crown jewel filters and look at them. In that case, we will not use top 10 because top 10 removes all smart filters. Highlight or heart button of interest button highlights the rows of interest for subsequent action and highlighting them makes it easy to read. Remember, there is a hotkey, control shift H if QH is open and QH is usually always open, always running. So control shift H to highlight the stocks of interest and maybe look at them across different columns. How are their growths in revenue earnings growth? How they compare, how dividend yields compare, highlighting them makes it easy to read disjoint non-adjacent stocks. Cut. After highlighting, if you want to remove everything else, then you may use the cut button to keep only the stocks of your interest, makes it easier to read them. And once you are done with an investigation, use the refresh button to refresh the data from cache where everything is calculated in real time to carry out the next investigation. So first part of the investigation to maybe to look for crown jewels and next investigation maybe to look for stocks with short squeeze potential. So when we are done with one investigation, done with analyzing crown jewels, then we may refresh the button and then carry out the next investigation. The smart action buttons populate the stock scorecard. That is at the heart of Q Vital, and it is also there in Q Edge and Q Index. Once the stock scorecard is populated, which is comprehensive yet intuitive, we use the smart filter buttons to act upon that or filter. The smart filters are designed to be exactly what a, a trader usually needs. It's organized into six distinct panels. The first panel is vital scorecard. 80 to 90% of stock selections is done from this panel. Then if you want to have more detail, you may look at the other panels. Price performance provides one year to one day in, and then in real time during market hours, price performance, and it provides the heat map. So we are able to quickly see which stocks were doing worse earlier and now starting to do better. So those are turnaround candidates. We may look that up from price performance step. Earnings growth and revenue growth for last five years and last four quarters, they're available in the growth panel. Then all the fundamental ratios and numbers, EV, EBITDA ratio, PE ratio, PBR ratio that shows how management is performing, dividend yield useful for passive income in undervalued stocks usually. Earnings per share to see if the company is making profit. Alpha, beta, how a company is volatile or not, or is it historically doing better than market or not. All these numbers and ratios, they may be confusing, but if you are interested to compare stocks with the ratios, then the scorecard provides an easy way using the heat map because sometimes a bigger ratio is bullish. Sometimes a lower ratio or lower number numeric value is bullish. We don't have to try to interpret. Just look at the color. Green is stronger than red. So just looking at the heat map, we know which stock is, for example, higher beta than another one or which stock has higher dividend, or I should say, Bullish, more bullish in terms of dividend rule, more bullish in terms of EP beta. Looking at the color coding, we can understand that. Then we have basic information like market cap, average volume, next earnings state, etc. in the basic info tab. And lastly, filter tab for internal use. Now, usually 80 to 90% of the time, we use only the vital tab because you will notice the key information from all the other tabs are already in the vital tab. 
So key information from other panels, not tab, sorry. Key information from other panels already in the vital panel. And plus it has additional scores like valuation score, it has fund score, it has short squeeze code, etc. So everything else, all the key insight from other panel plus additional scores. That's why Q vitals, vital score panel is usually the thing we use the most. 80 to 90 percent of the time that's enough to find stocks. Once the scorecard is populated, we act upon the stocks using smart filter buttons. They're used to filter and stock filter and sort stock scorecard using smart criteria works on the view. They do not refresh the data from cache. Smart action buttons tend to refresh data from cache, but smart filter buttons do not. That is by design because smart filters are used as part of investigation. In the investigation, we don't want to update the scorecard. If we have applied smart filters, we have sorted the data, we don't want that to be refreshed. That's why by design, smart filters do not refresh the data from cache. Most smart filters have a bullish and an equivalent but opposite bearish button. Reset button. If the smart filters are in a group, and mostly they are in groups, I think all of them, whether group or not actually, the reset button will reset the filter for that group. So every group has a, every group or every themed, like for example, nearby earnings date. That is not a group, a single button, but that also has a reset button. So it will reset that smart filter or that group's mass filter. Then we have the combo selection buttons that I use the most to find the best and worst fundamental stocks. Crown jewels, undervalued stocks with high earnings as well as revenue growth, very bullish stocks. And then overvalued stocks with high negative earnings as well as high negative revenue growth. Those are bearish stocks. The most bullish and most bearish in the stock scorecard. Then next comes less bullish than crown jewel, three star bullish, undervalued with high positive earnings growth and bearish, overvalued with high negative earnings growth. Next comes one star, less restrictive than three star, either undervalued or high positive earnings growth, bullish stocks, and either overvalued or high negative earnings growth for bearish stocks. Usually, I look for crown jewels to buy or short fast. If I don't find any, I go down to three star. If I don't find any trade, I go down to one star. I don't go beyond one star for buying or shorting especially for buying. For shorting, it is in Q guidelines, for shorting, it is okay to short fundamentally strong stocks also if the industry is weak, the industry has to be weak and technically there has to be a short setup. So for shorting, the rule is a little bit different. I am able to short even if a stock is not falling in any of these three categories, but for buying, I always look for either of these three. You may look for crown jewels first. You may then look for three stars if no crown jewel to buy and then lastly one star. That's one technique. The other technique is just apply the one stars smart filter and then look at the stocks. Look at the stocks meaning look at their Technicals, look at their industry and then find the 360 degree strain. So both are possible. You may start with crown jewel first, then three star, then one star, or you may just go to one star. Then using a single button, the advantage of starting with one star is just with a single button click, you may look up the industry scorecard of all those stocks and then quickly focus on your today's trading universe, today's trading universe. Which one technique do I use the most? If I am trying to find trades in real time, I may use the one star button. 
is of course personal style. If I'm trying to find 360 degree trades in real time during market hours or before market close, after market open, those are market hours, then I may use the one star. And when I have more time after market close, then it, it gives certain satisfaction to look at crown jewels, the best of the best first and then look at three star. When time is of essence, I just click one star, carry out the 360 degrees analysis, and then find the trading opportunities. Finally, whichever combo button you use first, you will always end up with 360 degrees trades. It's just a matter of liking or style. Then after the combo filters, we have individual filters, valuation filters to look for undervalued stocks or overvalued stocks or medium valued stocks. Will you use medium valued button sometimes? Yes. If you want to short a stock, you don't want to short, for sure you don't want to short undervalued stock. You'd like to short overvalued stock, neutral may also be okay. So if you are not using combo buttons, and especially if you are trading in smaller countries, smaller markets where the stock universe is not so large, then you may not find tradable opportunities using combo buttons all the time. In that case, you may use the less restrictive button. So use yellow to buy allowed, use yellow to short, that's also allowed. So for buying, how, how that will be for buying, we'll buy either green or yellow. For shorting, we'll short either red or yellow. So in, in some cases you may use it, but mostly in non-USA countries. In USA, I have seen the stocks breadth is so wide, we can always find undervalued stocks to buy or high growth and overvalued stocks to short. We usually don't need to use the yellow button separately. But remember, when we are finding high growth stocks, some of them may have medium valuation. So they will come in the list anyway. When we use the combo buttons like one star, then also the yellow medium valuation stocks will come anyway. So we don't use it explicitly, the yellow button. Usually we don't need to use it explicitly. It is there, but usually we don't need to explicitly use it, but stocks with medium valuation will automatically come in the scorecard based on the smart filter we are using. Then we have the smart filters for growth. We have three sets, one for quarterly earnings growth, one for annual earnings growth, and one for quarterly revenue growth. The first is quarterly earnings growth. In terms of trading, these are the most important between the growth filters. Wall Street seems to be happier with earnings growth. They also like revenue growth, but seems to favor earnings growth first. And because US stocks mostly, US stocks, I think they always announce quarterly result. So quarterly earnings growth has immediate impact on a stock's move. So they, that tends to be more important for immediate short-term trading. And then of course, yearly earnings growth is also important, but quarterly earnings growth first. If, for example, if annual earnings growth high, quarterly earnings growth negative, that may not be a good buying candidate. We would like to have quarterly earnings growth bullish first. And there are different buttons. All the bullish buttons are in green. Extreme high positive earnings growth in last quarter coins. Extreme high negative earnings growth coins. IBD style traders sometimes look for extreme high earnings growth, not just high. Then next three successive quarters of high positive and then three successive quarters of high negative earnings growth. Then less restrictive two successive quarters, high positive, high negative earnings growth. Further less restrictive, one quarter of high positive and one quarter of high negative earnings growth. Then even less restrictive, but turn around filters, 
quarterly earnings growth reversing from negative to positive. Usually traders notice that, investors notice that probably even more, but it is useful filter to find buying opportunities from stocks where earnings growth is turning positive from negative and maybe shorting opportunities if earnings growth is reversing from positive to negative. It might not have become high earnings growth yet, might not come in the one, two, three filters, not in the coin filters, but just having reversal of earnings growth may be enough indication that the fortunes are shifting and you may look for buying and shorting opportunities. Then not even turn around, but just improving earnings growth may also be important, especially in stocks that are newer stocks, maybe new IPOs or biotechs, small biotechs. Maybe their earnings growth is still negative, but improving from the previous quarter. That may also be something that Wall Street will notice and you may look for buying candidates from there. A similar set is there for annual earnings growth. Three successive years of high positive, high negative, less restrictive after that, two successive years of high positive, high negative, one year of high positive, high negative earnings growth, and then similar to quarterly growth patterns, uh, yearly earnings growth turn around from positive to negative and negative to positive. Cyan is bullish, magenta bearish. Yearly earnings growth improving, maybe still negative, but improving. That is bullish and worsening, maybe still positive, but worsening, that is bearish. So these are yearly patterns. Yearly patterns can be used certainly in the USA market and must use in other countries where quarterly earnings are not available. For example, I think on Australia, many stocks don't have quarterly earnings growth. So then you are able to use the annual earnings growth filters to find buying candidates. And some ADRs also, because they are actually listed, the main companies are in other countries, the ADRs may not have quarterly earnings growth. In that case, instead of using the quarterly growth filters, you will use the annual growth filters. Next is revenue growth filters three successive quarters, high positive, high negative, then less restrictive, two successive quarters, high positive, negative, further less restrictive, one quarter of high positive, high negative revenue growth. Now you can see using these three sets of filters, that is quarterly earnings growth, annual earnings growth, and revenue growth also. You are able to implement the box stocks. In HSI, the traders use a concept of box stocks. They create a box, usually nine boxes, plus some more sideways boxes to find high growth stocks. And the con idea is that buy box stocks after a market correction, but even without market correction, box stocks tend to do better. Why? Because it's very straightforward because they are high growth stocks and the boxes, different boxes just show different levels of growth. Growth, high growth for how many years, how many quarters, they are organized in boxes and you are able to implement that in real time on any stock list of your choice using this smart filter patterns. And you may also implement the combo filters using these four sets. What are the four sets? The valuation set, and then smart filters for quarterly earnings growth, quarterly revenue growth. If you use them, you are able to implement the combo buttons, that is crown jewels, three star, one star. How I use it? I use combo buttons because they are very fast and they focus on the best of the best. If I am buying, why? why settle for anything other than that. But if you are interested, you are able to do more detailed analysis. Then some more smart filter buttons, fund ownership, very useful. 
especially for position trading and longer term investment bullish fund ownership is always preferred where is fund ownership maybe funds have already bought it long before or maybe they are not interested because fundamentals are not strong enough there may be alternate stock so they may not be interested in this particular stock neutral is neutral for short term trading where my holding period is about 5 to 10 days then i don't look at it so much but if i want to buy a stock for longer term then i would like to look at the fund smart scorecard i would like to have green in that scorecard seen in cyan magenta yellow color the button is green the cyan score will show fund ownership is bullish then quarterly revenue smart filter usually used for newer ipos to check that they are actually having some revenue not like nicola which is not making any money and the stock went up a lot to filter out those stocks which are just paper stocks and maybe fraudulent sometimes like theranos for example not sure if theranos was listed but nicola is listed if they don't have quarterly revenue it may not be the right time to buy let them start selling something that people are buying if the company is of value we'll have plenty of time to buy it after it starts generating revenue short squeeze potential that is also very useful if we are buying fundamentally strong stocks with short squeeze potential they may go up a lot because the short holders will have to bail out one by one as the stock starts to move up the short squeeze is based on fundamentals based on short interest of the stock not based on technical squeeze so if we find a q squeeze stocks or momentum squeeze stocks coming out of squeeze with a short squeeze potential that is even better and today i'll probably share one stock like that in the live demonstration part earnings nearby that is also useful very useful actually for short term trading we don't want to buy a stock just before earnings not stock but sometimes people may like to trade iron condors before earnings so either you are filtering out stocks that you don't want to buy using stocks or short using stocks before earnings you may do that using this filter and if you want to focus on stocks near earnings for iron condor like play then you may also use the same filter it will show you the stocks where earning state is nearby and earning session is now so it may be a button that you may use now more than other times then some more smart filter button sort by today's percentage change and the system decides today intelligently if it is market hours it uses real time column if it is not market hours it uses one day percentage change column sort by the data bullish button will take the stocks with biggest up move to the top it will not filter out anything it will sort and sometimes you may want to sort not only by percentage change to see if they have volume also that is sort by pressure again bullish will not filter out anything it will bring the bullish or stronger pressure moves to the top and bearish button will bring the bearish or weaker moves to the top then up down simply to stock show stocks that are up today simply to show stocks that are down today so these are also useful buttons for example you may might have created a list of stocks with bullish seasonality using seasonality program that i explained in separate webinar earlier we created a list of bullish stocks for the current month we already saved it in universe tab in vital then every day what will be a possible workflow we don't need to run seasonality again 
no point because seasonality is based on historical data. I see some people actually look at seasonality programs every day. In my view, absolutely no use because seasonality doesn't change from day to day. It just takes processing power of your computer. And if you find really strong bullish seasonality for this month, it will be a handful. Just store that in universe and every day create a scorecard of that stock if you are interested. If your workflow is seasonality fast, you don't need to run seasonality program. In my view, it is not useful. Just run the scorecard on the bullish seasonality stocks and then click the plus button. Of course, you could also click the combo buttons to find crown jewels, etc. But if your primary decision factor is seasonality, you may just buy based on which bullish seasonality stocks are up. Is that the way I use it? No, because seasonality is not primary factor for me. But if seasonality was primary factor for you, you would just run the scorecard of bullish seasonality stock, find bullish stocks using the plus button. So these buttons are also useful. All designed to do something that a trader would like to do. And different traders may like to do different things. So there are smart filter buttons for everybody. I may not use every button. You may not use every button, but probably over time, you will use all of them. I think probably over time, you will use all of them. Now let's demonstrate Vital. And then I will also not only demonstrate Vital, but use it as part of workflow, trading workflow. And I will make it part of workflow or flows where Vital is the starting point. So there will be two workflows like that. One is fundamental first and one is seasonality first. Because for seasonality, we have the list of bullish very seasonality stocks in Q Vital. Let me make sure if I have that saved. Yes, I have that saved for October. Okay, now let's start with Q Vital. Q Vital is organized into tabs, home tab for input of data. The input is in green color, checkered background for root stock, the list of stocks. You are able to manually enter the list of stocks Usually that's not the way we use it. Usually we integrate with other programs, either technical analysis or industry analysis, seasonal analysis to get the list here. Or we may get the list here from the universe tab also. The universe tab stores the trading universe under different categories. Usually I only store broad categories. Some people store very detailed categories, I don't but you are able to store detailed categories if you want to. For example, if you want to store IBD 50 stocks in universe, you are able to do that. I don't do that because I find the high growth stocks in real time from broad lists. So I, I don't do that, but you are able to store detailed lists also. Then the symbol tab is to convert tickers to definitive code stock and stock to to view the scorecard and then act upon it using smart filters. There are some more inputs. One is PR relationship. If we are carrying out PR analysis of a root stock, for example, let's say, let's say Facebook. If you are carrying out PR analysis of Facebook, then we may choose the PR relationship. Is it industry or industry plus? Industry plus will find same or similar industry stocks. If we put industry, it will find only that exact same industry stock. So as you have seen, I use industry plus all the time for USA market. But if I am trading in some stocks where the industry classification may be a bit confusing. For example, some solar energy stocks may be shown as semiconductor stocks. 
So we have two fields. One is industry and alternate industry. That's very useful. Some other programs may not have it. The industry for some solar energy stocks may actually show as semiconductor. But if you look at their business description, which comes here, if you study them in detail, where the revenue is coming from, etc., what product they are making, etc., you will find they are not really semiconductor stocks like Intel is. They are more renewable energy stocks. And we have two industry fields, industry, alternate industry. So we are able to see when there is a confusion and then investigate the stock further to see, should we focus on alternate industry peers only? And for some solar industry stock, that may be the case. If we want to focus only on alternate industry peers, then in the peer relationship, you may not want to choose industry plus or industry. You will choose industry two, that is the alternate industry. This has a drop down. For smaller countries, on the other hand, let's say for let's say for Singapore or Thailand, where I'm living now, Singapore, where I lived for 15, 20 years before. Those are very small markets, stock markets. If we find industry peers, there will be very few. In that case, I may choose sector peers. The peer relationship allows me to choose stocks in the same sector. For the USA market, I don't use it because the industry is good enough to give me a sizable list of peer stocks. And if the stocks are in the same industry, then the peer analysis is most useful. If we look for same sector, it is useful, but not so much. Why not so much? For example, materials sector has gold mining stocks, as well as coal, coal stocks, as well as wood products stocks. They are very different. They are not really PR. A gold mining stock is not a PR of forest product stocks. That's why I don't like to use sector relationship. But if industry relationship is not giving me enough stocks, which is true for smaller countries, then I may use the peer relationship as sector relationship. There is, an, there is a possibility to check country peers, but I don't use it that way. It's too broad. Then there are some other input buttons to find stocks with minimum, minimum certain parameters. So market cap, at least 50 million, minimum closing price, at least $5, minimum average volume, at least 50,000. I usually don't change them. These are the default values and I tend to use them in all countries, the countries that I trade. That's why they are kept at a relatively low value low values, not very high values. So many traders will not trade stocks unless they are trading at least 200, 250, or even 500,000 shares per day. But I don't try to control it from here. I don't need to try to control it from here. Why? Because the universe of stocks that I'm using, that already has the criteria inbuilt in them. So universe, when I create the liquid stocks list, I already selected stocks with enough volume per day. And I already selected stocks with the price range I'm interested in. They are already in universe tab. I don't need to use the parameters here. That's why you will see me not using them. They are there, but they, I don't use them. And Tuna, I explained most of the time, you will not use it. It's 80 now, but by default it is 50, doesn't matter you change it to higher value than threshold, usually only in pre-market hours if the real-time analytics is being filled up. Here, here, and also in the graph. Then we have the orange buttons to integrate with external systems, smart action buttons, sand buttons, smart action buttons to to keep us in the, inside the application, do something, and then the final result will be the stock scorecard that will come in the stock tabs. Let's look at the stock tab, the scorecard. We have some smart action buttons 
the orange buttons will take us to external applications. The cyan buttons keep us within the application. And smart filter buttons are on the stock scorecard on the vital panel. What we are seeing here is the vital panel. All the key information from other panels plus additional scores like valuation score, fund score, insider score, etc. This additional information plus key information from other panels like earnings growth, revenue growth, dividend yield, earnings per share, company making money or not, next earnings date. And you see a lot of the stocks are highlighted now because it is earnings season, earnings is nearby. Percentage change. These are from price performance panel. The growth numbers are from growth panel. Dividend yield is from information panel. So we have inside from all the panels plus additional information in this first panel, which is vital panel. Most of the time I use that only 80 to 90% of the time. That is good enough. But if I wanted, I could always go to the other panels. Price performance panel and you notice the heat map. If I wanted to see which are the worst performing stocks in this list. Okay, most of them are strong. Worst performing is this one, PFSI and then we may see, are they starting to do better than others? Just by looking at the color coding, I can see interesting. It just happens in this list. It was not my pre-planned list of stocks. The ones that did the best earlier, they are not the, sorry, they are not the, some of them are actually up today also in real time, but some of them are not doing well like this one this one but the the top one which was the worst performer over 12 months is now doing better this list of stocks is small list of a particular industry but if you carry this out on a bigger list you are able to see and especially when they're in different industries whether the worst performers are doing better now in same industry also you can do that so price performance step to find relative turnaround candidates. And if, if the list is large enough, you may also use the acceleration column. The stocks that are accelerating the most and few of them are there. And these are decelerating the most today, relatively. Doesn't mean they are going down, but decelerating relatively, which ones are accelerating, which ones are decelerating. Any score is in cyan magenta, any number is in red green color scheme. So that's price performance panel. Sometimes I use it to look at worst performers, look for turnaround candidates. Then growth panel, usually I don't look at it because key insight is already in the vital panel. But if you wanted, you could look at five year earnings revenue growth and all the last four quarters. Usually I don't need to come here. I use the vital panel and the smart filter buttons for earnings and revenue growth. Fundamental numbers and ratios. And again, if you see the heat map, let's sort by EV EBITDA. As I mentioned, we don't need to worry whether a larger numeric value is bullish or not. We just look at the coloring and P ratio also. Of course, some of these fundamental numbers and ratios may be interpreted in entirely opposite ways. Some people may say high P ratio is more bullish. That's that's a, uh, there is an explanation for that. And some people may say that P ratio is low now, so it has better potential to go up. Now, you cannot argue with either way. So that's why if you use fundamental using ratios, 
it may be confusing using different thoughts. You may think lower P ratio better or higher P ratio better, and both have some truth in them. So you have the fundamental ratios and numbers, but again, I don't use them. I use only the key information that is already in the vital panel. like the dividend yield. I don't use the short interest actual percentage because we have a scorecard that is more reliable because we are in fundamental analysis, by the way, the numbers in themselves do not mean much, even for dividend yield, even for earnings per share. Numbers in themselves do not mean much unless we compare a stock with PR stocks. Only then we know whether, let's, let's look at dividend yield. We cannot say three is high or low unless we know there are stocks with better and worse dividend yields. Similarly, for P ratio, we cannot say 11 is good or not unless we know there are better or worse. Of course, as I mentioned for P ratio, it may be interpreted in a different way. So these numbers in themselves do not mean much in fundamental analysis. We have to compare them. That's why the scores are very useful, whether it is valuation score or fund score or short squeeze score. I use the scores more than numbers when they are available. Then some basic information. I hardly ever come here. Again, the key information is already in the vital tab. What is the key information like the next DPS then? Then the internal filter panel. We have the smart filter buttons at the top. One category, the first category is for combo buttons. I explained the buttons already. Then for valuation, then quarterly earnings growth, annual earnings growth quarterly revenue growth, fund score, quarterly revenue used only for newer companies, usually only for newer companies. Grown companies will have much more earnings growth than restricted by this filter. So this is useful only for newer companies. Earnings nearby or not, short squeeze, sorry, short by pressure, this is short squeeze. Sort by pressure, sort by percentage change, and just look at stocks up or down. Now let's run cube vital. Let's check this stock QLCO. I think it's QLCO, QMCO. Rootstock, I can enter as ticker code like QMCO, or if I knew the definitive code, I would just add .o, that will speed up performance. But to demonstrate, let me type the ticker code. It will first find the definitive code. found the definitive code qmco.o, .o is for ordinaries. Find some basic information about the stock. Then found some PR related numbers like real time up, down 25, up, down in PRs among the PR stocks. How many PR stocks? 28 PR stocks. Status fields are in orange background. So 28 PR stocks it found. Which industry or industries? Technology, hardware, storage, peripherals. That is the primary industry of the stock and alternate computer hardware. It found stocks from both those industries. Why? Because I choose the peer relationship as industry plus. That is the usual choice I use for USA market. As I explained, you could use 
only industry or alternate industry i explained sometimes for solar stocks i need to use alternate industry only otherwise it will show up it will show also semiconductor stocks for solar stocks in peer relationship that's not appropriate for smaller countries use sector hardly ever i go to countries country but you are able to do that also for UC market industry plus is the appropriate choice unless again it's like those stocks where industry has to be selected specifically like some sort of stuff coming back to this stock qmco it is quantum cop we have some description of what the company does ric countries united states of america these are the industries infotech sector alternate sector is technology current price so it's it's okay for me to buy it at least it's not one dollar stock five dollar stock i am okay to buy average volume again as i mentioned i don't need to use the volume filter i can also check from here Four hundred thousand shares traded per day good enough volume five day over 30 to 30 days is going down that's fine the some of these are good information to see not requirements for q trade setup market cap alpha beta eps companies making money or not next earnings day 26th october today's 14th october so enough time is there to take a swing trade and if it was too close this sale would be colored in red so it will alert and you can see red can also mean up or down or red is alert background ticker code below 52 week high 44 percent above 52 week low 28 percent and this is percentage change five day to real time all are up this is the advanced decline breadth of pr stocks today is certainly very bullish we have that from the graph 89 percent of stocks are up today earnings growth for short-term trading latest quarter is most important even for longer term investment starting point is always important to have high growth in the last quarter and we have that in the last quarter revenue growth is also there we can see from the graphs on the right year on year quarterly revenue growth going up year on year quarterly earnings growth came down one quarter but it's still positive and large positive number then EPS last quarter, last year, revenue last quarter, last year, then fund score, insider score, analyst score, and analyst rating. Also have valuation score, secondary valuation score, earnings quality score, whether the company is reporting earnings that is not repetitive. Maybe, maybe because of some, some uh, sell transaction or some special event like uh, provision for bad debt that was taken out I, I saw some banks reported earnings and they reported very good earnings one reason was provision for bad debt they reduced that provision for bad debt but those are not repetitive so that doesn't mean earnings may be high but the quality may not be very high so this earning quality score may help in that again for short term trading is not a required condition but if you see earnings quality is magenta let me explain how to use it in q trading if earnings quality is magenta and for some reason some reason whatever be the reason you are thinking of buying a stock just before earnings if you see earnings quality magenta you may avoid that earnings quality green before earnings you may still buy i mean for longer term investment you have to hold it across earnings so with that argument you may buy some stock before earnings also if you are thinking of holding long term if at all you do that you may check earnings quality is not magenta if earnings quality is magenta it may 
have a sudden large drop. Of course, if it is cyan, it may also have a sudden large drop, but we are trying to align more and more factors to our trades. So in case you are thinking of buying a stock, not using iron condor trade, but buying a stock before earnings, you may see that earnings quality is not magenta. That's how Q trader, one Q trader might use it. These are key stock score or stock uh, insight, some summary information about the peers, the summary graph here, advanced decline breadth and key stock score. And then we use the smart action buttons to get it to the scorecard. They are for the PR stocks of the same root stock. So they belong to same or similar industries. Then I'll use this button to get it to the stock tab. If this list was list of different industries, then I'll use the alternate button to take them to stock to tab. Let's take it to stock tab. Let's find crown jewels bullish. None. If none, then I use the restriction, try to find three star, several. And I can immediately see that they are up by significant percentages. They are three star because they are undervalued with high earnings growth, up by significant percentage. So I may click the chart button to integrate with Q Global to open them in Metastock. Then I may apply the technical analysis, the checklist conditions to see if they have a trade setup or not. I'm not trying to find trades today. If I wanted to bring the stocks to Q Elite, and let me do that for one star, I clicked one star, Click the sonar button, export ticker symbols, go to trade station, Q Elite. We have different sonars or radars, paste them wherever you would like to. And Q Elite will show the technical signals and we see some of them are breaking out. And the one that I used as rootstock QMCO is actually one that is breaking out. I'll not go through the technical signals that is for another se session. Coming back to Vital, today is about Vital. So integration with Q Global Chart, integration with Q Elite. Let's check QMCO seasonality. So I put my cursor on the QMCO row, anywhere on the row, that is the context. If I have a stock in context and click the seasonality, it will use QMCO as the stock and show me the seasonality. October seasonality neutral, but November seasonality is strong. So if I am thinking of buying options, I may make sure that my expiry, if it is a bullish option trade, this is how I use it. Even if it is not very bullish seasonality, not 80%, so seasonality in itself will not be a factor in buying QMCO options. But if I am buying QMCO options, I may make sure expiry is in November, maybe near the end of November. That way I can align the seasonality improvement from October to November in my favor. Okay, let's clear it. Let's go back to vital. To decision is more on vital. Go back to the stock score can. Let's look up its industry. My context is QMCO again. Look up the industry graph. I use the industry graph integration button. That will look up the industry, alternate industry, score graph, and also percentage change graph. So I can see technology, hardware, storage, peripheral score improved rapidly. It's like a parabolic up move, bullish move, alternate score, same. Sometimes, okay, I'll not go more into these things. So, so they, are, they are looking bullish, both percentage change and score. 
and then we may look at the actual scorecard over time it is improving today the second most accelerating industry let's go back to vital go back to scorecard so we found a stock using qmco that is giving a possible breakout setup we saw that from ql it is in strong accelerating industry fundamentally it has high growth so let's look at its chart again let's look at it using three chart template and it may be giving a breakout setup today we have to see at the close of the day i actually posted about this stock in the forum before our session today at the right right hand side you can see many momentum bullish signals it had some bullish headwind in both daily and weekly and today and this week's candles are bullish in color shape so this was a stock that you could find from starting with cube hyta provided you had the stock in the stock universe list let's see is it there in that list qmco yes right qmco is here mid price stocks so if you carried out fundamental first workflow usually i use this mid high price stock list in that or if it is the mid price stock list yes qmco is in both the list so let's carry out the workflow now mid high price stock list now it is the trading workflow not only using cube vital using trading cube vital as the starting point of a trading workflow that is fundamental first and in this case i didn't use the root stock i retrieved the broad universe into watch list using the pr analysis button cyan color button always keeps me inside the application so when i used it on a stock universe context sensitive it used that list as my stock list and it is retrieving data from refinitiv and it will calculate a scorecard also let me show that now i am on the home tab there is no root stock so all the stock information is blank this is for root stock so there is no stock in context and now if i use the integration buttons for example q edge industry lookup integration this two gear two cog button it will not have any industry or stock in context so it will take me to the overall q edge view the sector industry stock advanced decline and the bucket analysis sector the home page of it that is also context sensitive if no stock is in context it shows me summary information same for finder now there is no stock in context if i click the finder button this button it will take me to the daily daily finder page let's go back to vital so i calculated a scorecard of these 2168 stocks all liquid stocks mid and high price stocks and now they are in different industries when they are in different industries i like to get the stocks in the stock 2 tab that's the norm i use these are the stocks let's find one star candidates instead of going from combo to three star to one star i found one star candidates click the plus button to look for stocks that went up today you may sort by ticker symbol when i click the plus button or the one star it sorted by today's performance and now market hours so it's sorted by real time but if i wanted to change the sort order by symbol for example i double clicked on the symbol column or you could use control uh, shift a d hotkeys so these are the stocks that are one star and 
if I double click to reverse the sort order, I'm trying to find QMCO. <laughs> okay, I could just look like this, QMCO. Yes, so you could find QMCO today in real time using fundamental first workflow, 4.79% up today. And I found QMCO as a fundamental stock that is going up, possible breakout, strong industry from a list of liquid stocks. I would like to, before buying QMCO, carry out a peer analysis because this list I used is liquid stocks list from different industries. Now I will use this integration, not integration button, this uh, smart action button, peer analysis. My context is QMCO. So it's going to use QMCO as root stock to carry out the fundamental analysis. So it has found 28 root stocks in same or similar industries. We have the basic information and short squeeze potential is there. That's good. Let's look at its PR stocks. And remember, stock two has all my liquid stocks. So I don't want to touch that. I want to get the PR stocks in the stock tab. These are the stocks. Let me click one star again. And I see QMCO incidentally comes to the top. So if I am interested in buying in this industry or similar industries, QMCO is actually the strongest in terms of percentage change today. And it is fundamentally strong enough to buy. That's how we carry out a fundamental first workflow, but don't buy just from that list yet. First, you carry out a peer analysis. In this case, QMCO happens to be the strongest one, but there are a few others quite strong. So you could look at them using Q Elite or Q Global. Look up them using charts. I demonstrated them already. Seasonality, I already demonstrated. Now here I click the one star button. If I want to refresh from cache, I click the black refresh button, all the stocks are back. If I want to sort by today's pressure, let's say, pressure, not by percentage change, these are the stocks. Then I may click the number 10 to look at the top 10 rows. And, and they happen to be in same industry. I'm carrying out a peer analysis now here on this tab. I may reset and I may use the individual filters like undervalued stocks. We said that look for stocks that are high growth in last quarter. Look for also stocks that are high growth in the last year. Some of them are up today also. Look for stocks that have bullish fund ownership. Okay, two of them. And WDC looks interesting. It's actually a three star because it has undervaluation, high growth quarter, high growth year also. Secondary valuation, valuation both are sand, has a short squeeze potential, fund ownership, analysts are bullish, buy rating, not that I use that for buying and real-time percentage changes significantly up. So this may be a fundamentally very strong stock to buy not only for shorter term, but longer term investment provided. It is in strong industry. Yes, industry is strong. We already saw that. You may check its technicals. That's how you find box stocks. This may be one of the box stocks by using the quarterly earnings growth, annual earnings growth buttons. And you are able to use the other buttons for extra confidence like fund ownership. Very useful, especially for longer term holding position trading. Okay, let's reset it. Now, how I came here, I carried out a peer analysis of QMCO and it happens to be the strongest one star. Usually I don't go below one star for buying, strongest one star. So my analysis for QMCO is complete. Now, 
using this button, I may navigate from stock tab to stock two. I applied the filter for one star, reset that. And remember, don't refresh. Reset the... Oh, oh, sorry, here I applied the, type the stock manually symbol, reset the filter. What I wanted to show that I found QMCO as a possible trading candidate from list of liquid stocks. I carried out a peer analysis of QMCO, all that I carried out in stock tab. My list of liquid stocks is still there. I don't want to refresh this using the black refresh button because now cache has PR stocks for QMCO, but I don't need to refresh it because this list is based on fundamental. So what I do, I, for example, I found QMCO from one star. I carried out a peer analysis of QMCO and now I am ready to carry out a peer analysis of the next stock. Let's say this one, CLLS. So again, carry out a peer analysis. This is one star undervalued stock, not enough earnings growth, but short squeeze potential. It's tradable in Q technique. It's close to 52 week low. That's nice. With short squeeze potential, very strong industry. This is biotech. Well, biotechs can go up suddenly, but in any case, biotech industry is very strong in itself. I'm not checking up the industry scorecard. This is for Q Vital. this webinar is for, but I will again take the PR stocks, the 61 PR stocks into stock tab. Again, I if I found CLLS using one star, a logical combo filter will be same one star. And in fact, CLLS comes to the top. So CLLS is the strongest moving, the best moving one star candidate. So if I used combo filter, let's say crown jewel, let's apply crown jewel on the liquid stocks. I see ICHR, a semiconductor stock comes to the top. So then I will carry out a peer analysis of ICHR using that as a root stock. This is great, undervalued, high earnings growth, high revenue growth, and a short squeeze potential. Significantly above 50 week high, that's fine. We can buy there also. It has retrieved the data, very strong industry, 92% of PR stocks, 72 PR stocks, semiconductor industries are up. Again, I look at them using the stock tab, because I use three star for ICHR, sorry, sorry, crown jewel for ICHR, it makes sense to use crown jewel in its peer analysis also. And then I see ICHR happens to be the strongest. Then I may look at some others also. You could also go to three star on this list or even one star. Up to one star, it is perfectly all right to buy in my view, perfectly all right based on a lot of experience. And you see in that case, AMBA comes to the top, not ICHR. Same industry. Actually, extreme high earnings growth, high revenue growth, short squeeze potential. Very much above 50, large, large move above 50 degree low, very close to 50 degree high. So this stock may be a IBD style breakout candidate if it is giving a breakout at 50 degree high. So that's also possible to trade. It is a very bullish move. So different ways you may find buying opportunities. Q traders also trade. I also trade near 50 degree high. No issue with that if I have a proper Q trade setup. So in any case, after carrying out the peer analysis, again, I go to the liquid stock universe scorecard that I have in stock to tab. 
and then I may look at the next stock. So after ICHR, I may look at UCTT. It's in semiconductor industry semi. So I might have already found that that the next one KMT, industrial something. So I will carry out peer analysis of that. All the while not refreshing on stock two, what I'm doing, I'm looking at the strongest liquid stocks of today. I mean, strongest fundamentals that are up the most fundamental first workflow, but before deciding to buy, even if I say HR or UCTT or KMTO or Vista Out or VSTO, they have buy setup before buying, I'm carrying out a peer analysis on stock tab. There may be other stocks, not in my stock universe that are stronger fundamentally and also giving a buy setup. So I do it in that way. Now, if your liquid stock universe is very broad, very, really broad, like mine is, if I'm using this universe, mid and high price stocks, I know that is the only list I'm going to use. I will not go beyond that in that case. In that case, once you have the scorecard in stock two, you don't want to or don't need to carry out peer analysis again, because you know any stock you will trade is already here. So if you want like UCTT, you may carry out peer analysis still. Why I say you may still carry out peer analysis because this graphical information and the scorecard in this home tab with the year on year performance is quite useful. It's easy to read. So I, you, not always need to, but always it's a good practice before buying, look at the scorecard using the home tab for the stock you are thinking of buying or shorting. It will make you make reading the fundamentals very easy. Everything is very clear and in some in graphical form. So that's how you carry out a fundamental first workflow. Now, if I wanted to carry out a seasonality first workflow, Remember, whenever I am done with an investigation, I click the home button on home page to clear everything at minimum. I don't need to pause because I'm still using Vital. Clearing the input from home tab by clicking the home button on home tab, it, it stops consuming processing power. Now let's go to seasonality tab. I'm again using QVital, but now my workflow is seasonality first. And if you look at QH, today is very bullish day. Very bullish day. So let's look for bullish seasonality stocks. The list is already created. As I mentioned, there is no point running seasonality program every day. This list doesn't change. And I see some people try to find bullish bearish seasonality for the coming week. I think that is trying to find something that is not there. Uh, unless... Uh, I cannot think of a case where seasonality for the current week, unless it is a uh, very big uh, event. I, I don't know, maybe some, there is some saying like sale on this day. Some, some I, I, I don't remember the exact names, some Yung Kapoor or something like that, sale on this day. Sale. If it is really so strong, then you may use weekly seasonality, but in my view, it's generally it's not useful. Trying to pinpoint seasonality to a weekly interval is not of use, why? Because seasonality is generally calculated either in Q program, Q season, or in any other program, always using weekly data, never using daily data. And when you use weekly data to create, analyze seasonality, then trying to pinpoint seasonality of a particular week, that is too much. So month month is good enough. That's why in Q season, I didn't want to go to any other interval, monthly interval. And if that is the case, the list is already there. Why do I have to create the list every day? It doesn't change because seasonality based on historical. So now using QVital, I'm doing seasonality first workflow bullish seasonality, let's again, same step like fundamental first. These are bullish seasonality stocks. So create its scorecard. They are in different industries. So once the scorecard is created, my norm is to take the scorecard to the stock two tab. Today is very bullish. So 
on such a bullish day, I will start with Crown Jewel. There are several stocks that are up in Crown Jewel. And now the list is very small, right? Uh, only bullish seasonality stock. In that case, I will certainly carry out a peer analysis of the stock. So let's do that for Ben. When my list is the entire trading universe, all liquid stocks, then I do not need to carry out a peer analysis. But I still carry out because I like to see the graphical form advanced decline inside. But in case where the list is narrower, like bullish seasonality, it's always, always recommended to carry out a peer analysis. You may always, many times find a stock that you didn't think of buying. You started with another stock in mind, Bain in this case, for example, but you may find a different stock altogether that you will buy. Bain has, of course, Crown Jewel. Hi, Arnix Roth. Hi, Revni Goth. Very nice valuation. Funds are buying. Above 52 week low, still below 52 week high. Up by 3.7 percentage. Earlier it was down. So from a, it looks like it was coming down and today it is up. 78% of peer stocks are up. So I'll carry out their peer analysis and it was crown jewel. It makes sense to look at crown jewel PRs first. It's okay to go to one star also, but because I selected Ben from crown jewel from bullish seasonality stocks, I look at crown jewel PRs and Ben happens to be the best performer. But I could look at the other three stocks also that are up, that are also crown jewel. It's also okay to look for one star and incidentally Ben still comes to the top so Ben would have been a good choice though here I started with a much smaller list of bullish seasonality stocks now do I need to check its seasonality not really because it is already known to be having bullish seasonality but if you want to read out the detail I created the list with to 70 percent or higher bullish seasonality. So we can see from Jan to September. I'm using 20 years data here. That's how I created the list. It was neutral October, November bullish. So if you are thinking of buying Ben, this may be a good time. And technically we don't have a setup. But that's fine. I'm not trying to find trades. That's how you carry out fundamental first workflow as well as seasonality first workflow. Now, if I wanted to look technical signals of Ben from Finder, I didn't run Finder in real time, but if I want to look up from the home page, I could do that by clicking the Finder button because a stock is in context, it will find the Finder signals. Franklin Resources, Ben. This is as of yesterday's Finder run. Then I could use Finder to look at momentum signals and others. But let me go back to Vital, centering everything on Vital. Chart, chart button, elite link I have already shown. The key wage integrations I have shown. The gear button, seasonality I have shown, Finder I have shown. Pause will pause play will play. Usually I don't pause. I just click the home button on home tab to clear all the input. It doesn't consume any power. Now let's import ticker symbols from Q Global using Explorer or Radar from Elite. Let's do Elite first. Let me drop a list of stocks in Q Elite. Let's say Dow Jones. I'm dropping a smaller list so that it doesn't take too long. While it is okay, now let me let me use somewhat bigger list. I want some symbols to come to transfer to 
vital for fundamental analysis. So I'm carrying out technical setup, technical signal analysis in Q Elite. Let it populate. Meanwhile, let me show on Q Global, we have many explorers, some are finders. So I already ran finder for yesterday's close. So today is bullish, so let me look at the data for the bullish finder. Now this is the data. Once you run a Q Explorer and be it the finder or any other, let's say breakout. Why don't I run breakout also today? On let's say mid price stocks, 1700 stocks, that's okay. Change the interval to daily. And this is very useful. Q Global can run on thousands of stocks in real time. Q Elite cannot. Because only radar on restriction is real time. Scan is not. And radar cannot handle 1,700 stocks. So it's running the Explorer. It will be fast. In a couple of minutes, it will be done. But let me take the time to go back to Q Elite. So Q Elite calculated the signals. Let's look for breakouts and look for bullish breakouts. So usually I sort by a column and then you may select the symbols, highlight them, click and drag, right click, copy or control C. Now I have the ticker symbols. Go to Vital import from ticker. You can click this button on home page, or you could go to symbol by clicking the symbol button and the same import from sonar is also on the symbol tab. Let me do it on the home tab. Import from sonar. If I click that, it will get the ticker symbols and find out the equivalent Reuters symbol, definitive symbols. Once it is done, I'm going to click the peer analysis for fundamental analysis. See what I did? I checked the breakout candidates using Q Elite. So the, I, I might have looked at their technical charts also using Q Elite. This session is not for Q Elite. Or I might not have. Before even looking at the technical charts, I want to see if they are fundamentally at least one star. Especially when this list is very large that are giving technical buy setup, possible buy setup. I don't want to look at so many charts. I want to bring them to vital first, look at their scorecard and because they are in different industries, I'll take them to stock to tab, click one star. Many, I will look at stocks maybe up by at least 1%. See what I'm doing. I'm now exporting the tickers. This list, 13, you may read the numbers by the way from the top left corner. 13 stocks in this list, these are one star, 13 are up. Whereas, how many stocks did I get? In home, if you see 17. So 17 breakouts today in NASDAQ 100, but 13 are fundamentally strong. So I cleared the list in Elite and I am putting the list back, the 13 stocks that are fundamentally strong for Q guidelines to buy at least one star. So that's how you may import export from to Elite and vital to find technical setups, but not look at charts, especially when the list is very large, look at their fundamentals, narrow down the list, bring them back to Elite Sonar, and then look at the charts now. Now, if you are using Q Global also, then usually I will not go back to Q Elite. I'll just open the charts from here. And the top one is WBA. Wild green boots elements. Okay, my explorer was running. Let me make chart as the default application. Minimize this WBA. Very strong bullish move today. 
reverse cell candle here, but I'm not trying to find trade setups. Let's close it. So I demonstrated how you may import tickers to Hytal, convert them with the symbol tool. We don't need to have separate queue symbol running anymore. We have the import from queue sonar and then carry out their scorecard. Now I also ran I'll come back to queue elite, but let me show the other way. And now, now it is not NASDAQ 100. You see queue elite or trade station is not able to process thousands of stocks in real time, but queue global can. So I found all the breakouts, 188 it found from 1,713 stocks. Right click here, copy all, go back to vital. There are 188 possible breakouts from mid price stocks. I am not going to look at 188 charts. Going to Cube Vital, go to Home, import from Explorer. The Explorer symbol in Metastock is like binocular. So that's the one I am using. Easy to remember. So I am getting this 188 stocks, retrieving data from Refinitiv, calculating fundamental scorecard. Very interesting, intuitive. And very, very powerful to find the best trading candidates in terms of every dimension. Seasonality, fundamental, industry, technical. So these stocks are of course in different industries. They came from list of liquid mid-price stocks. So I'll take them to stock to tab. And because today is very bullish day, I'll start with on such a day, crown jewels. Vista Outdoors, VSTO comes to the top because they're in different industries. Actually, my list was broad enough, but still, as I said, my practice is always to carry out a peer analysis, if for nothing else, to look at the stock using this single page scorecard. That, that gives me visual clues. Vista Outdoors, again, connecting with Refinitiv. Of course, Crown Jewel, great valuation. Oh yes, excellent. Fantastic earnings growth over three years, three quarters. I just need last quarter earnings growth, but it is having much better than that. High revenue growth. And a short squeeze potential. 87% of peer stocks are up. Just for the sake of it, let's look at its industry scorecard today. Well, it is 127% above 52 week low. So it may be buying at a higher price point and industry is very strong today. Okay, go back to Vital. to decision is on Vital again. Oops, I, I meant to come here and carry out a peer analysis of Vista Outdoors. Find Crown Jewels. And there are other stocks also, crown jewels in the same industry that are up by high percent. And the heat map is such that immediately from the different columns, you know which are strong. And by the way, some of them have very good, HZO has very good fund ownership also. You can see the top two are at least very high above 50 week low, but it is okay to buy also those stocks. So that's how you, import data from technical analysis from Q Elite or Q Global both. We can export data to Q Elite using the sonar button to Q Global charts using the chart button. Let's see what else to cover. Let's look at the scorecard. Symbol, universe, stock tab, home tab, stock to tab. So I have, I think I have covered the two workflows and I have demonstrated use of 
all the integration buttons, all the smart action buttons and some of the smart filter buttons. You may apply the smart filters in different ways. So let's, let's say earning season, this is earning season. So what you may do again, if seasonality is bullish, let's see. Now I'm carrying out a new investigation. Bullish seasonality, let's see if any earnings is nearby and then we will try to find technical signals. And let me delete the rows from Q Elite. I always have the habit of clearing content to save processing power. I, I know some people have very, very high high powered computer. I have medium powered computer, but whatever be the case for you, doesn't make sense to use the computer processing power if we don't need. So I always clear, for example, Q sonar radar content if I'm not using it. Of course, if you have very, very powerful computer, you may think, why bother? Just keep it, but I don't do that go back to cube heighter. So these are bullish seasonality stocks and they are in different industries. My norm is to take it to stock to tab. Now I'm having a different technique in mind. Bullish seasonality, now I'm looking at earnings nearby. I'm applying the smart filter and you will see only rows with next DPS date highlighted in red comes. So they're having earnings nearby. So I would like to check their technical signals. So I exported the rows. Now I'm checking their technical signals using Q Elite. If I ran Q Finder, I could do that using Q Finder, or I could look at their technical charts also using Q Global, but I'm using all the different integrations today. In fact, Instead of using this sonar, let me use the other sonar where it will automatically find the trade setups and the stocks with maximum number of trade setups will float to the top. On a very bullish day, we may need to, or we may want to, not need to, we may want to narrow the list faster may want to sometimes just going slow is also fun but these are the stocks where trade setups are floating to the top so what is this investigation now this is about bullish seasonality stocks with nearby earnings so i may be thinking of some options trade before earnings that will hold across earnings because earnings is already nearby or long term investment may buy before earnings. In that case, I would have also applied the earnings quality filter. Why don't I do that? Let me do the earnings quality filter. And if there is no smart filter button, use the smart filter by color using the drop down. So now I have this list of stocks. So let me look at this narrow list of stocks. 11 stocks all are up. Get their ticker symbol, go back. Now I further narrowed the list quickly. These are bullish seasonality stocks, earnings nearby and bullish earnings quality. So it is somewhat safer to buy before earnings. And some of them are also having breakout, you can see. The ones with trade set up now are coming to the top. And most of them have one trade set up or another three breakout, one go with flow. If we give a couple of more seconds, it will sort, but that's fine. We may look at them, Teradyne, Greco, RHI, and we can see their industry. Tracking, why don't we see tracking? It's not a session on QLED, but you may also look at the trade setup first. Of course, that is 
that is the primary thing to look at when using this sonar and then further look at percentage change. So teradyne is interesting, biggest percentage change among the breakouts. They may look at that and it has a very nice breakout indeed with bullish flow as well coming up from the bottom. But I'm not trying to find trade. There is a trend line resistance in weekly. But see what is this investigation about? Stocks with bullish seasonality. Okay, now is the time to go back to seasonality program and see how is the seasonality over a period. We now know it is from my universe list. It has bullish seasonality, but let's see how the seasonality is changing from month to month. And is it 70, 80, 70%, 75% exactly what is the seasonality and how seasonality is changing over the period. So like the other stock we found earlier from March until September seasonality was neutral. October, November, December, three months. Interesting, isn't it? It happens like that. I started with bullish seasonality. I looked at stocks specifically with good earnings quality so that even if I'm buying before earnings, it's a little bit safer. And I find from this month to December, it has relatively more bullish seasonality, not 80%, but still not 70% or above. And that may be a stock you may consider trading either using verticals or if you are thinking that Teradyne is a stock you may hold longer term. Now we have found a, probably the perfect time to buy because it is the first breakout after this downtrend, this long downtrend in weekly also. And earnings quality is strong, earnings is nearby. One might think of, if you are really thinking of buying, you might use synthetic long stock with a protective put below but protective put may be expensive because earnings is nearby. So these are different styles. If you think you are going to hold it long term, then by definition, you may hold it across earnings. You may not buy the protective put, but if you buy the protective put below current price, one, one good price to buy might be 105 strike, which is a watermark support, you may recover some of that protective put cost by selling out of the money call. And a good call to sell will be this, maybe this watermark resistance, if you have premium enough for that, 124, or you might sell around 120 or 128, 129, the trend line is. So those are different techniques, but you may use Q vital as an integral part of many techniques not just Q360 degrees, that is aligning industry fundamental technical, you may carry out other, other things like before earnings, find bullish seasonality stocks, giving technical setup, use options to trade, or may even use stocks to trade. You may use iron condors. You may You may also look at soft squid. In this case, I don't see short squeeze potential in any of these stocks. Having that would have been even better. After I carry out any investigation, as I mentioned, I like to go and clear the content, start with the new investigation. Let's see, we looked at what is Cube Vital, platform data, market country applicability, how it is organized, convention, inputs, smart action buttons, stock scorecards, smart filter buttons, and detailed live walkthrough, and two trading workflows, fundamental first and seasonality first. You could use seasonality program, Q seasons to start seasonality first workflow, but as I mentioned, it's not required you could actually use cube vital for seasonality first round. I covered all the topics. The more you use cube vital and integrate with finder, edge, seasonality, Q global, Q elite, you will find 
it extremely valuable and intuitive and easy to use the more you use the more you will you will find your it as your friend in trading i think that is all for today that's about cube vital thanks for joining have a wonderful day and as always no reason not to do that trade profitably thank you